Hey guys, welcome back to our segment routing series. In the last episode, we went ahead and took a look at the one of the dynamic paths, and the path was purely based on the metric type of IGP. We had multiple paths available. That means if one of the path goes down, the policy or the PCC or the head end router, in that case was P1, could figure the alternate path and our policy wouldn't stay up. And if you recall, all of these links are configured with their default values. We have not changed any of those things. And again, if you want to verify, we can go ahead and do the same command, show MPLS traffic engineering, and the command here is topology. Now it says, okay, hey, I'm neighbor with this one. And if you see the line where it says T metric is one, and right now the IGP metric is also one. And that seems to be the case across all of our neighbors. So we have not made any change. In this episode, we will continue to talk about our dynamic policies because the dynamic policy had two things, optimization objective and the constraint. So, so far we have been focusing on optimization objective. We have not learned about constraint. So now within the optimization objective, the second type of objective today we want to go ahead and explore is your TE metric, which your traffic engineering metric. And if you see right now, our TE metrics on all the links has a default value of a one pretty much. So now let's go ahead and start with that. And then we will go ahead and play around with these TE metric and see how that really affects our policies. So now we will go ahead and simply create a policy. So now if you recall, just to make sure we don't have any existing policy, so we are doing show segment routing, traffic engineering, and if you go ahead and take a look at, yeah, we don't have any of the policies on our box. So now let's go ahead and start creating a policy. So to do that again, segment routing, traffic engineering. And the very first thing we have to use the policy keyword followed by a policy name. So let's call SRTE underscore P-O-L-I-C by policy. And this will be based on the TE matrix type. The very first thing then in this one, you have to go with color. So let's pick a color of 20 in that case, and we'll go ahead and use the endpoint. And our endpoint has an IPv4 address. And again, that happens to be, let's in this case, again, P3, which has an IP address of 192.168.0.7. So let's go ahead and configure that. And once that is done, the next thing in the policy we need to create are the candidate paths. Again, we can have multiple paths. So within the candidate path, the very first thing that we need to go ahead and configure is the preference for a path. That where it says, okay, hey, policy path option, preference entry, really. So now the preference for this path, let's say we'll say 100. So within the preference, there are a few things that we can go ahead and work with. The thing that we are interested in is dynamic, which is dynamically allocated path. Yes, we want to allocate a path, which is dynamically allocated. So let's go ahead and use a keyword dynamic. And within the dynamic, there were a few things. And one of the things that we had talked about earlier is the matrix. And here it says a path matrix configuration. So now let's go ahead and say matrix. And within the matrix, there are a few things. And one of the options that we are interested into is type, which is okay, hey, the matrix type configuration. What type of matrix we want to go ahead and configure that? So we'll say type. And if you press a question mark again, there are different type of matrix. So we had talked about IGP. Today we are talking about the TE. So let's go ahead and say that type is TE. That'll be all. Let me go ahead and commit the chain. And when the changes are commit, let's come out. Let's take a look at the policy that we went ahead and just created. Now, if you take a look at the policy, here is our policy that we just created. The policy name is SRTE dash policy underscore TE. The color value in this case is 20. The endpoint, which is our tail end IP address of the destination, has an IP address of 0 0.7, which happens to be the PE3 router in this topology. In the candidate path, we have one path for that. The preference is 100, and the path is being calculated dynamically. That's why we are saying dynamic. And the matrix type that is being used is T. Again, we are leaving the work of path calculation to PE1, which happens to be our PCC also. That means it is this PCC's responsibility to find a path based on the metric type of TE from PE1 to PE3. 
and if this stage let's take a look at the status of our policy and then we'll explore a few more things so if we do show segment routing traffic engineering policy here so in this case we say okay hey we are looking at again srte database the color is 20 and this happens to be our endpoint the admin state is up right now and the operational is up that means the pe1 was successfully able to calculate a path based on the type of a te matrix and again if you take a look at here some of the thing the matrix type here it clearly says hey te and for this matrix type te it says okay the path accumulated metric the matrix values right now what three in this case because all the paths had a matrix value of one 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 and it says okay hey these are the hops that i am passing through so pe1 first is going to 16013 which happens to be our p3 router followed by it says okay hey uh, 13 so this is how it is it is 11 12 13 14 so it says okay my first hop is 13 so i am going to this one p3 router from p3 router i am going to p2 router which happens to be 16012 so it is coming via this particular cross link this particular cross link and from there it is going to 16,003 on top of this line. So that means PE1 is going via this particular path. This, then the second one, this one, and that's the third one. And that is our current path. Again, we can run our some of these standard command like show IP interface brief. So now let's take a look at one of the command again, show MPLS forwarding. And here we can see our dynamic bsit 24009 for this one and you would see some of the information uh, primarily over here now if you really noticed that in this case okay uh, we have two paths again you know one of the path go down i can go ahead and potentially pick another path or in this case it happens to have multiple path based on that te matrix so now all the links has a default matrix of one what happens if we go ahead and change the metric? Is it going to impact our policy in any way? And we can go ahead and explore that. So now let's go ahead and log into we know okay, it is going via the router P3. So we can go ahead and go to let's say go to router P1. Now let me go to log into router P1. Okay. And on the router P1, we have we have few interfaces and one of the interface let's say this interface which is facing towards pe1 now facing towards pe1 happens to be the interface number three so now let me go ahead and change try changing the te matrix for the link from between pe1 and your pe p1 and your pe1 router so in this case we need to go to segment routing traffic engineering and within this context we have a command that talks about interface here if you see the interface it says enable srte on an interface so now let's just simply go ahead and say interface and the interface we are interested in gigabit ethernet 003 and if you take a look at there are a few things that we can go ahead and do that and the thing that we are interested in is matrix which is interface te matrix configuration so in this case we are saying matrix and after that we can go ahead and give a matrix value let's go ahead and change the matrix value to something else now i want to go ahead and change the matrix between p1 and p2 and that happens to be the interface gig 000 so i'm going to go ahead and change on that one also so i'll say i'll come out once and i'll say interface gigabit 000 and we'll say the matrix here I'll go ahead and give value of 1000 and I'll go ahead and also change the matrix on this particular path between P2 and PE3 so I can go ahead and see what is that link and that need for that we need to go on the P2 so I'm just saving the change right now on P1 committing the change and I'm going to go ahead and log into P2 also here quickly and on the p2 the link that we are seeing it happens to be 004 so we'll go to p4 segment routing traffic engineering interface gigabit ethernet 004 and the matrix for that let's say we are saying 50. 
So on the bottom leg between PE1 and P1 router, we have changed the metric for this interface. We also change the metric interface between P1 router and P2 router, which happens to be this interface. And we also went ahead and changed the metric between P2 and P3 for this particular link. So we went ahead and changed the metric or the TE metric for some of the interfaces. Now, if you come back to your PE1 router, and before I run any command, I want to run the command that we ran to see what was the default matrix value, if you recall, and that was what? Show MPLS traffic engineering topology. Now, in this output, if you take a look at right now, it says, okay, hey, I'm neighbor with this fellow, and there the metric is, T metric is one, and IGP metric is one. That is fine, and there is no bandwidth present. That is fine. Now, let's go ahead and scroll down further. Now, if you take a look, it says, okay, hey, for my link one, which I'm neighbor with this fellow, if you take a look at the TE metric right now is 1000, and that's what if you recall on this interface, we had went ahead and configured 1000. Okay, it says the metric is 1000, and TE metric, IGP metric is still one. That's what we have not made any change on that particular side. And if you continue to scroll further, it would continue to show you the rest of the TE metric and IGP metric in the e topology. And if you scroll further, okay, for this link is one and one. This is one and one. Now, if you take a look at now, we do see uh, at the link that we had changed to 100. Now it says, okay, the metric for one of the guy is 100. IGP metric is still one. And if you continue to scroll the topology output, in this case, okay, for this link, it's still default. For this link, it is also still default. This is another interface which is default. Okay, and this is another link which has a default in the topology. Okay, this is our last interface. So you can see the topology is now correctly reflecting the new TE matrices that we went ahead and configured. And again, how did we configure that? You can go ahead and again take a look at. So we went inside the segment routing traffic engineering. And within that context, we went inside the interface. And in the interface context, we went ahead and configured. Uh, we did this configuration on P1. So let me just show you on the P1. Show run segment routing traffic engineering. And you would see under the segment routing traffic engineering, we went to the interface and to the interface we went ahead and assigned 1000. This is an interface on P1 facing towards PE1. And 003, this is the interface facing towards P2. So we went ahead and changed these interfaces TE metric. Now, let's go back to our, our PE1 and see, take a look at now our policy again here. So I'm doing here show segment routing traffic engineering policy. And in this case, it says, okay, hey, now the path accumulated metric is three. And this time the path that I'm taking, I'm going from PE1 to P3. That's why you see 60,003. And from there, it says, okay, now I am taking a path and going to 16,014. From P3, I am taking the, the stop path. And then from there, I am picking another path. So this policy has multiple paths to go ahead and you know figure it out some of the things and at the same time we saw how we can go ahead and make change to the links uh, you know te metric and you know influence some of the things now if you see in this case okay it is taking this particular path now let's go to the p3 and for p3 we will go ahead and change this links a metric so let's take a look at what is the interface on p3 the interface is one so now let's go to p3 we go to P3, we go simply the segment routing traffic engineering interface and I'm sorry, that was again P1, happens to be the P1, okay. So we go interface gigabit ethernet 001 and then we'll say metric, let's go ahead and give it a metric of, I don't know, maybe 100. Now let's come out and let's go back to PE1 again and take a look at the show segment routing traffic engineering policy again. And in this case, now you see, okay, now the PE1 is going to PE11, it happens to be. So in this case, 11 happens to be this interface. 
the P1 interface and from there it is going to 14 from there it is taking this cross link to go to 14 and from 14 it is taking a different path so you see the beauty behind the dynamic policy is they tends to take a different path depending on availability and you would see how some of the te matrix are playing in the role so it is trying to go picking a path which has the lowest te matrix and that is why when we are increasing the te matrix for some of the existing path it figured out okay hey, this path is no more valid or the best path let me go ahead and figure out another good path and again if you go ahead and make change to this particular path yeah it will go ahead and figure something else out to go ahead and try that if you want to really try one more time let's go to the p1 and let's say on the p1 what is the cross link interface on p1 the cross interface is 002 so let's log into p1 and increase segment routing traffic engineering interface gigabit ethernet 002 and let's change the metric type here maybe to 300 and let's come out let's go back to pe1 again and see now what is the path the pe1 has calculated and what path it is picking now if you see interestingly it says okay hey this time to figure out a best, best path i had to go through four different halves that's why earlier we had a path accumulated metric of three now we have a new path accumulated metric of four so it says okay hey, now i'm first going to 16003 so it is going to 16013 which happens to be the p3 node from p3 it says okay hey i am taking this cross link to reach p2 and from p2 i am going back to p4 and from there i am going to this because you recall for this one we had increased the t matrix so the t matrix on this link versus this link the top link had a lower matrix that means it is a preferred path so that is now the pe1 is taking the path the top link to go to p3 from p3 it takes this cross link to come down to p2 from p2 it takes the side link to go to p4 and from p4 it is taking this link to come down to p3 that's why now we have four matrix because this link have a higher matrix value and that's how you see how good it is to when we have the policies of the dynamic type we are not making any change to our policy as the situation changes in the network the policy is able to figure it out a valid path and that's how it can route our continue to route our traffic hopefully you got the idea behind the te metric how do you go ahead and change the te metric how do you take see what is the te metric using the topology commands and all and again yeah you can go ahead and all those standard commands that we have learned so far in this series that'll be all for this episode i will see you guys in the next episode thank you